So you've decided to cross the creation consumption divide and start capturing your own game console footage. Unfortunately, there are tons of options out there for exactly uh, which capture card you should be using to do that. Now, I know that there are more options available than ever before, but because I'm sort of a brand loyalist, I would highly recommend that you consider going with Elgato. They're not a sponsor of the show, they never give me any free stuff or anything like that. I'm only recommending it because I have had nothing but success with their products. I am on my second capture card from them now. Uh, everybody who I've talked to uses their products and they absolutely love them to death. And I think that they're it's just something to be said for you know the fact that they've been doing this longer than a lot of the other players out there right now. But that being said, there are also a lot of different options in terms of what kind of capture card you should pick up. Even with an Elgato, there's like the HD30, there's the HD60, the HD60S, uh, there is an internal card, there's a 4K card. So with four to five different options, even within the same brand that I heartily recommend, how do you know which one you need? That is what this video is all about. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can choose which card best suits your needs from Elgato. So how do you decide what are the factors in determining which capture card you need? Well, for starters, let me ask, are you a Mac or a PC? If you are a Mac, there's probably a good chance you don't have a lot of expandability options. You probably have something that is not very upgradable like this iMac I've got behind me or a MacBook Pro, for example. So if you are a Mac person, you're probably going to want to lean towards an external capture card like the HD60 or the HD60S. If you're a Mac, you're going to need one of the external options pretty much, both of which you can attach externally via one of your USB ports. The major difference between these two is that the HD60S provides a USB 3.0 connection instead of 2.0, which allows for things like instant game view, um, and it's really geared more towards those that use their capture cards for streaming, because you can use a capture card not only to capture your footage and save it for editing later on, like I do, but also as a way to basically stream console footage to Twitch if you're not using like a built-in option for example and when it comes to the HD60S it's incredibly low latency it's actually so low in fact that you can play the game directly within the Elgato software's capture window in many cases and because you can also stream to services like Twitch like I already mentioned the S's low latency makes it ideal if you are doing the streaming thing but if you're just looking to capture footage and you want to make sure you get stable 60 frames per second so you can edit it later on and create really good looking YouTube videos and you really don't care about streaming to Twitch then the HD60 should be just fine for you now, if you're on a Windows PC or you have a big, beefy gaming rig that's a desktop, you may want to look at doing an internal option that actually slides into an expansion slot on your motherboard. Ultimately, it gives you sort of a cleaner setup if you go the internal route, but at the same time, even though you get a cleaner setup, you sort of sacrifice some portability there, right? Because if you want to attach it to a different system, you have to, you know, actually crack open your case and take it out and move it over to another system. Or if you want to take it with you on the go and capture footage at, you know, a party or if you're at a convention or a LAN party or something like that, um, it may not be as practical to have an internal card. It might be better to have an external one that you can just connect through USB, for example. But if you're looking for just the absolute top of the line capture capabilities, you can opt for the 4K60 Pro, which Elgato also sells, which will allow you to capture 4K footage at 60 frames per second, but you are gonna pay a premium for that privilege, good sir or ma'am. That's gonna be a solid $399 right now, I think is what they're asking for that card. But the thing is, unless you know you are doing you know, incredibly high-end footage for a premium YouTube channel or something like that, there's a good chance you really don't need to be capturing at 4K, as most web video is completely fine even today at 1080p, despite the proliferation of, you know, 4K cameras and 4K displays. You don't necessarily have to shoot in 4K to get a good-looking video, and by same measure, you don't have to capture, you know, 4K gameplay footage to create usable video. So, you know, if you, you have the cheddar to blow and you absolutely demand 4K capture, there is an option for you. I'm just saying for you know the average consumer or the average creator, you probably don't need to drop that much cheese unless you're super committed to the absolute best video fidelity you can get. Now, if you don't go for that 4K60 Pro, the HD60 Pro is essentially the same thing as the HD60 external that I was talking about earlier if you're connecting to a Mac, for example, but it's also a fraction of the cost. It also clocks in around the $150, $160 range, sort of like the external ones do. 
Personally speaking, if I could only recommend one, I would recommend probably the HD60, uh, the external one, I should clarify that. And the reason is simple, it just provides flexibility that isn't there otherwise. Or if you've got a buddy who, you know, wants to borrow a capture card just so they can capture some footage, um, you know, and, and, you know, play around with an, with an Elgato capture card to kind of see what that experience is like and try their hand at editing some video gameplay, um, you know, it's just nicer to have it as an external. Yes, it's a little bit messier, but, you know, you can always hide cables out of the way and ultimately I will always prefer, you know, something that could be used with a Mac or with a PC, um, you know, and having that, that sort of flexibility, I think, uh, is, is probably more desirable than whatever cleanliness you get from, you know, the internal, which actually, you know, may, it may not just be like a cleanliness thing. You may actually get a performance bump with, you know, um, a card that's attached directly to your motherboard, but I personally would recommend for the, again, the average consumer, the average person just looking to capture some footage in an easy way, go for one of the external options. I think it's the better buy. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you just need to pick the option that works best for you. But still, I contend that Elgato is a fantastic brand when it comes to capturing gameplay footage, and you cannot go wrong if you choose a card from within their family of products. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions about capturing gameplay footage, I will certainly do my best to answer it. Just make sure you leave it down below, and make sure you subscribe for more Geeks, Games, and Gear right here on Geeks Podcast. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one later.